Um, today I'm going to be doing some quick tips on how to improve your digital art. Um, some of these are exclusive to Fire Alpaca, however, most of them are just work for every platform and are just good to know as an artist. Um, for the first one, I think this is very important, especially for beginners. This is a very beginner friendly video. Um, is getting pen pressure. I'm going to be showing an example. Um, it's really hard to make good line art without pen pressure, um, especially if you're new and you're used to traditional art. Without that pressure, it's going to be very difficult for you. Um, I know lots of artists that can do it without pressure, um, and they can make fabulous pieces, but especially if you're new and you have the option to, I would try to get pressure. Um, the first example we have here is with pressure. Um, I did this one much quicker. It, it's a quick sketch. It took like two seconds, really. Um, and it's a lot less work because then you don't have to go and fix the lines and it's not as much as a struggle. Um, without pen pressure, you're going to have a lot more issues. It's going to be hard getting fine lines and getting the shapes that you want. Um, yeah, so this is something I would definitely recommend, even if you're new to this craft, I guess, is getting pen pressure. When I first got my Wacom tablet, I spent like days trying to figure it out, and I will tell you, it is definitely worth it figuring out your application and how to get this feature. It, it will help so much, you just have to trust me, and it will make all of your sketches and line art look so much better. And line art is already a difficult task in itself, so getting pen pressure is very important. Um, learn your application. Um, this also takes a really long time. Um, I can link some artists below that have lots of great videos on Fire Alpaca, but for reference, I'm going to show you how to do the lasso tool. This is for Mac, but it is the same for most computers as much as I'm aware. So for the lasso tool, I'm going to grab the lasso tool and you're going to wrap it around whatever you want and then do Command T, and that stands for Command Transform. And then you're going to get this little box down here, and you'll be able to move everything as much as you want. And this does let you flip things too, so if you have trouble drawing eyes like some people, this can help. Um, you need to click click the OK, and then to deselect, you're going to do Command D or Command Deselect. I use this a lot, and this is going to make it so much easier for you. Um, and this has helped improve my proportions a lot. And I think this, besides the color picker tool, is one of the best and notable. It is pretty important. It'll make your life so much easier. Um, and I think besides the lasso tool, um, protect alpha, and the color picker, the lasso might be the most digital art thing. I don't know, man. Uh, next thing I'm gonna talk about is Protect Alpha. I'm going to talk more about this in my later slides, I guess. Um, basically, this tool allows you to... The Protect Alpha feature only lets you color on lines you've already filled in on that specific um, layer. So on this layer, I only colored here and here. So it's not going to let me color over the lines. This is great for um, recoloring line art or a plethora of things. This is great for a plethora of things. I can go more in depth in a later video, but this is super important. You're gonna see this on most applications. The name is slightly different depending on what application you use, but for Fire Alpaca, it's this little blue check um, right here on the left-hand side of the layer file. Um, next on the list is to copy and study other digital artists. Um, yeah, I think a good practice is to copy other artists' paintings. Now, don't post any of this, obviously. This is just for you, and don't claim it's your own art. This is just really good practice for beginners. I did this a lot, and it helped a ton. Like, this is one of my older drawings, and I think you can see the improvement in this video. <laughs> um, the next thing I want to talk about is brushes. Fire Alpaca doesn't come with a lot of great brushes. Um, I know Procreate has a really nice brush set, but because Viral Packet is free, you're not going to have these benefits. You're going to have to go download your own. Um, my most used brushes are ones that I've downloaded. 
For my favorite brushes, I put the pen because this is what I like to use. It's completely flat. It's great for liner or filling in liner before you go over it with other brushes because you're going to make sure you get everything in the little crevices. The airbrush, and I'm going to go more in depth on that later. This comes with it. And then these textured brushes over here, which I downloaded from Cheap Crabs DeviantArt. I have a whole separate video on that um, for Mac and Fire Alpaca. Um, I'll put that in the description, but I'll also put a little card up there for you. Uh, yeah, having different brushes is very important. Um, especially, like, depending on what look you're going for, um, if it's not going to be something flat, if you're doing a more painterly style, or you want to have more interesting line art, then you need to download extra brushes. That's just how it is. It can also be a lot of fun, too. There's a lot of very niche brushes, lots of cloud brushes and things like that. Um, my next tip is to color your line art. Um, so this is line art for a painting I did. It's just a sketch, don't look too much into it. I just wanted to show how you can use line art. And this is colored line art right here. I have colored for the hair, which is different than the face and the hoodie. But then when you add the black line art, it makes it look um, less round, I would say. The black line art takes away the color from everything around it, kind of sucks it all out. Um, the colored line art makes it look much more natural though, and it's much more smooth. Um, this is something I did using the Protect Alpha feature. Um, yeah, so you just click Protect Alpha on your liner, and then you can color over it however you wish. Um, very much suggest it. It varies style to style, but I think you should try it at least once. Um, you'll be surprised. It makes it look so much better. Um, oh, the next one, the reference tab. This is specific to Fire Alpaca um, here. So if you go to your window up at the top, it has all these different things, including a reference. If you click the reference, it has the space here and you can open any file. So this is the reference I use for this photo. It helped a lot with the proportions. I usually take it out and then pull it and then bigify it. Um, the color picker, color picker tool with this is also really helpful. Um, yeah, I would definitely suggest this. The fluffy brush that I use for the liner in this is also from Cheap Crabs. Um, I really like this style. <laughs> um, the next one, you've probably heard this a million times. Um, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit more on it. Um, so this is about using the airbrush tool for shading. This is a super common mistake I see in lots of like brand new artists, especially digital ones. And that's where they try to use the airbrush tool for shading because they think it make it, they think it'll make it more realistic. However, I think if you're a beginner or you're doing some very complex painting, there's no reason for you to use it for shading. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Um, if you're doing something in this style, ideally you would stick to shell shading. Um, and that's a lot more like this. It's much smoother. Um, and the airbrush tool is kind of cheating. However, I don't mean that you can't use the airbrush tool at all. A very common use for the airbrush tool is for blush. Um, lots of people will do it at noses. There's lots of cool things you can do with the airbrush tool or if you're reflecting light off of something, it's a great tool. Just don't use it for shading. Everything else is fine, just don't for shading. It looks tacky and it doesn't, it takes the form and it flattens your piece a bunch. So no. Next thing is using the line tool. Um, lots of people do this. Um, because they haven't figured out how pressure works yet. Um, I see this specifically in a lot of more animated or anime styles where they'll go around with their line art tool and just do this. And it takes the form out of everything. It's what it does. Um, 
If you're going to draw lines, unless it's architecture or buildings or roads or you're using perspective, there's no reason for you to use this tool. Even if you are making light, uh, line art with like straight lines, it's better that you do it yourself because even then it will look more natural. Um, the last thing, which I think helped me a lot, is understanding the difference between painting and cell, cell shading. Um, there is a YouTuber who has a great video on this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and this helped me a lot. It's this guy down here. I'll also put his card in here and put him in the description. Um, I'm going to show you the difference. Don't mind the titles of everything. Um, but this is a example of a digital painting. This is one of my first digital paintings, so don't judge it too much. But this is the process of going back and forth with the airbrush and your painting tools. Um, and you just do it in one later, and it's going to have a lot more form and shape than cell shading. This is an example of cell shading. Um, You'll notice all the shading is done in blocks and same thing with the highlights. This also gives a lot of form. It doesn't take as long though. Um, another thing I'd like to point out about this piece is I did use the airbrush and there is a time and a place to use an airbrush and this is an example of it. Um, yeah, just don't use the airbrush for shading and you'll be good. So that's the difference between these two paintings. The sketches look the same. Um, just one has liner and one doesn't, and one uses the airbrush and goes back and forth. Um, this one takes a whole lot longer than this one, but both are totally acceptable choices. Um, I hope this helped. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, if there's anything you want me to elaborate more on, totally. I'm just trying to figure out what people are wanting. I will definitely do a more in-depth video on this in the future. Um, online art possibly and pen pressure, but whatever you guys want.